Okay, looks like I got you. You still got me? Yeah, we're good. Excellent. Um, what's up, Drew? How you doing, hey. man? Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, dude. Welcome to Psychedelic Cast. We got Drew Banky. Uh, we are going to be discussing his book. Um, tell me the name of your book again. It's uh, I'm Perfect and So Are You. Awesome, awesome. So we're about to take a little bit of a deep dive into here, promote the book a little bit. I know you've got quite a story. Um, I've only got a cursory idea of, of what your story is like, but uh, I'm sure you're going to be able to tell it to us in great detail. So maybe just briefly introduce yourself. Uh, tell my listeners what led you to write this book, and then I'll kind of we'll kind of dig in a little deeper. Yeah. So um, I guess first and foremost, uh, I'm a sun dancer. Um, I'm a carrier of the sacred pipe. Um, I'm also a father, a husband, um, a human. And I'm also Ayahuascaro, uh, Wachumero. I work with Ayahuasca and uh, the San Pedro uh, Wachuma. Um, I also work with natural healing energies. I teach uh, people how to tap into their telekinesis powers, uh, telepathic powers, how to astral travel, uh, interpret dreams. I do a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> I've had a lot of experiences of... I've been in a lot of uh, sacred ceremonies, indigenous ceremonies, both with uh, plant medicine and, and not. And, um, you know, I've had um, it's led me to a great understanding of the energetic field and our existence here and how we work. And, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of listeners, it's uh, it's part of the medicine path where you get shown your mission here. And, you know, my mission is to be, you know, the voice of the universe and voice of source and the voice of uh, this consciousness and this movement, this ev evolution that we're going through. So currently, um, me and my wife um, co-founded uh, Sacred Dreams Within, a plant medicine church in uh, Colorado. So um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit church that um, deals with ayahuasca and San Pedro helping people heal from traumas. Um, my backstory, how all this happened, I'm a veteran of two tours in Iraq. I did a tour in 2005 in Baghdad, uh, Iraq, and 2007 in Ramadi. And uh, 2007, the second deployment was really the deployment that caused a lot of my traumas that um, eventually led to manifest into my PTSD and eventually led me to the medicine. So, um, yeah, ayahuasca saved my life. Uh, got out in 2009, uh, from the army, uh, 2014. Um, I had a massive suicide attempt where I got caught. Um, basically there was several times before that were definitely a uh, suicidal, um, attempts happen, but Nothing that was to the extent where I wind up in the ER. So in 2014, I, I had a suicide attempt. I wound up in the ER and um, I had a business at the time I was starting and lost the business and lost everything and, you know, really hit rock bottom. And, you know, it, that um, catalyst pushed me to ayahuasca eventually. Uh, it was about 2016, um, ayahuasca finally started coming into my dreams are coming through people around me hearing the word for the first time. And then it started, you know, that, that seed, once you hear ayahuasca for the first time, it starts to it, just the word itself starts to germinate inside you. Um, I'm sure the listeners can, uh, I'm familiar with that sentiment. Yeah, uh, I know. I remember that. hearing, I remember hearing the word ayahuasca the first time, probably in, I want to say like late 2014, late 2015. And yeah, just the word itself, like, seemed like a, such a, a veil of mystique around it. And I was like, okay, what is this? I, you know, And I had already been exploring the psychedelic space with uh, various other plants and compounds for at least 10 years at that point, but not to the depth that Iowa – and I've expl expressed this many times on the show, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but – ayahuasca was really like the one that kicked the door down for me as well and and showed me the true power of of these uh of these compounds so yeah i'm, I'm familiar with with what you're saying it seems to it's like a seed and then it, it starts to grow and then pretty soon you know it was like the first time i heard it i knew immediately i was like i i need to do that even though i wasn't sure what it was you know yeah 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 for, for me um I was at the end of my rope, you know, I was, uh, went, I was going through the VA, um, 
so 2000 from 2014 from that suicide time that's when i that's when i found out i had ptsd i didn't know what i was dealing with really and then it started mm -hmm. being uh diagnosed and started unpacking um my experiences from iraq and then it was became very clear of the ptsd and what it come from so um the VA did what they could, um, limited resources, you know, um, one hand tied behind their back, you know, and really the doctors, all they had was medication prescribed. So when um, <clears throat> I had to detox for my first ayahuasca ceremony, I had to detox off of five medications um, that, were ta that I was taking, uh, two at night, three during the day, uh, just to stabilize my mood so I could just survive. And it was, you know, the... The story on pharmaceuticals, you know, is just making me a zombie, you know, disconnecting me from the truth, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, didn't didn't really know about the spiritual side of ayahuasca. All I knew that I was I read a bunch of stuff and it was talking about how I was helping veterans and I needed help. And that's the, that's what I went into. And I come out with, you know, by a two ceremony uh, weekend, my first weekend at, at Soul Quest in Orlando. That's that's the very first time I did uh, ayahuasca when they were very first starting out, and um, yeah, just got blasted me wide open. My second ceremony, I got shown my past lifetimes, the spirit world, and you know, I just went back. I think uh, the next weekend for another two ceremonies. That third ceremony, I got shown um, that. The vibration of the universe was going to be transmitting through my vocal cords at one point and that's what i'm doing now so um you know fast forward um definitely lost track of ceremonies in, from here from that point on <laughs> but uh i did uh six ceremonies at soul quest and then uh the the medicine told me to to go and find my find there was a teacher waiting for me somewhere a uh indigenous teacher waiting that was going to meet me somewhere but it wasn't at soul quest so i had to leave and um that's the only place i knew other than down down in south america you know and I'm not rich by any means, so is uh, the travel was just out of the question at that point. I think that's what a people, a lot of people um, face in the United States right now, which uh, jumping forward, jumping around a little bit, but that's that's really a lot of my heart, uh, me and my wife's heart, why we offer this medicine, you know, in the states, um, you know, it's a gray area, lots of times with with laws and everything but you know we're under the cover you know we really do it out of faith of the being covered by the light so to provide it here for these people that don't have a couple thousand dollars to get, get on a plane and especially now with the travel restrictions a lot of people need help in the states right now need the need this vibrational medicine that we that we offer um to help them get through to get over a roadblock in their in their spiritual path you know and that's ultimately what what happens um hold on just a second i'm gonna can you pause this for a second yeah I yeah gotta, go ahead man all right no worries And we're back. Oh, the most important part of the equation, plugging in the laptop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, okay. so um, you're kind of telling me um, what led you to ayahuasca. Um, what is it that ayahuasca showed you? Um, I'm assuming that, that your book is about healing from your PTSD and kind of your, and your journey in general. Uh, what were some of the things that ayahuasca specifically showed you in relationship to your PTSD? Um, did it only have to do with your military service? I'm assuming that if you're like me and the and most of us, your our PTSD kind of goes deeper than our adult life. Usually, it's something from our childhood or, or a co collection of things from our childhood. Did it did it open any of those doors for you? For sure. Um, so. Um... Definitely over time. Um, at first, it just showed the. So the second ceremony, it just showed me past lifetimes. Over time, it's showed me an infinite amount of 
lessons um, on how really we go through the same traumas over and over. It's really just one trauma and we're, it's, 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 we go through it until we deal with it in a certain way. All of our, um, and what I found out in, in our work, we all are, we all have childhood trauma in some way, form or fashion. It could be, it could be sexual trauma. It could be physical trauma. It could be emotional trauma. It could be spiritual trauma. It could be, it could be you're too rich. It could be you're too poor. It could be all the, all these things cause traumas in different ways. You know, the, 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 the child, the kid that grows up, that's too rich. He's alienated and never knows if he's, if he has a, um, a legitimate friendship, you know, and the person that poor, you know, has to go to school with hand-me-down clothes and, you know, get picked on like that. So we all have by design, it's, it's, you can look at it as a trauma, but it really all trauma is a, gr- is a chance for growth. So, Really, what I found out, the bigger the trauma, the bigger the growth that the universe is trying to get across to you. So mm-hmm. um, so my third ceremony with ayahuasca, it showed me that I was going to be doing, I was going to be being this voice and uh, there's this evolutionary shift that was coming up and I was going to be doing this thing and writing this book and all this stuff. Show me that in a, in a way that... Um, there was a bunch of show me a vision. I was a bunch of people in front of me, and it was uh, information coming through me. And I was it was using my vocal cords to translate into a way that could be understood uh, by by the majority of the of the collective. I at that time I asked. I said, "Why me?" You know, I was in Iraq. You know, I did two tours in Iraq. I did things in Iraq. I, you know, that are not in conjunction with this path you're showing me. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, you're mistaken because the path that the energy that it, that you uh, used in Iraq to be uh, aggressive and, you know, to to be willing to take lives and to give your life, you know, that same energy, if it's turned around and it's 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 turned around 180 degrees, it can be it can be used and it can change. It can actually create life. You know, that that, sure. that that destructive energy turned 180 degrees can and we, you in this lifetime have decided to see both ends of that um, spectrum in your in your experience in this lifetime. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at now. I'm at the age of, you know, I'm at uh, my second I'm at my third deployment, you know, now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and this evolutionary um shift that's going on now the the war of the light or whatever you want to call it but it's uh in my eyes it's not a battle anymore but (laughs) from my standpoint i understand uh that's really interesting that you say that because during my first ayahuasca experience i was shown something similar now granted we have different background i've not a veteran i've never been in a in a violent situation like that i've been in violent personally violent situations fights and and things like that during my life but the the opening the op i guess what most people what you would call the peak or the come up um during that portion of like the first hour to two hours it was just this like violent psychedelic inferno it was like nothing i had ever experienced it just felt like this mammoth power was like assaulting me and I kept asking, I was like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Like, it feels like you're trying to dominate me right now. It feels like you're trying to scare me, like you're trying to flex this power. And it basically, in that portion of the experience, was telling me, no, just watch. Just watch. Just just stay with us. It's going to be okay. Just watch. And so finally we come to like a lull and then other lessons are handed down and other highly bizarre experiences take place moments of telekinesis time seeming time travel obviously uh visionary states but at the very end of the night it was like she told me the reason why we showed you that power in the beginning that that thing that you were so afraid of and that thing that seemed to be lording over you was not to try to dominate you or to try to scare you we're showing you the power that you possess within yourself that you can utilize at your will and you were not aware of how large that power was. So we had to show you that. And I was like, oh, shit, that kind of makes sense. And like, in <laughs> yeah. hindsight, I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> when it's happening, yeah. it's not not so much fun. But in the end, I was like, 
okay, that that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, this kind of ties in. Me and my wife was actually speaking about this just before this podcast. I, I was put. I was wearing this shirt, and it's my anaconda shirt. I wear this in ceremony a lot, and um, I had experience with the anaconda where um, one time in ceremony. It swallowed me. It swallowed me from my feet, and I, I watched it come to me. And it was just so big that, you know, I processed whether I could run from it, hide from it, fight it. And it was just so large and massive. It was coming to me, and it was a vision. But um, I actually didn't get swallowed by anaconda. But in this vision, I did. Yeah. And uh, but it's a it's a point I had to surrender, you know. And um, me and my wife was talking about it. It's like you know, processing that moment. It's um. You know, the, the anaconda represents the ayahuasca and it's so massive and it's coming to you and you can't, it, it gets to a point where you can't fight it. It makes you surrender because this is something that a lot of us have to have to learn and we, we don't know how to surrender, you know, and that's, I think that that's along the same lines of what you were just talking about, just in a, just in a different metaphors, but, in, in, you know, in the, in the same way um of of that of ma- of making you surrender just that you know that fire I, I know i know what you're talking about like that fire that's coming over and you're just like okay like i have to figure out something i have to get out of my body because i feel like i have to get out of my body at this point you know and this it forces you to do that and this is this is kind of what the medicine does so these medicines really what they are like you know my understanding of and reverence to these medicines have has um, developed and grown over time and um, evolved. So now I see ayahuasca as the representation for the divine feminine consciousness of the entire universe, and it's in physical form. So we can, so it helps us to get to get to that vibration. And it's a, it's a it's. Um, and getting down to like a Tesla talk, you know, it's frequency and vibration. And this is the, this is the vibration of the divine feminine consciousness. It's the vibrational code is embedded in, in the, in the medicine of ayahuasca. The peyote and the uh, um, San Pedro is the divine mask is the same thing, but it's the divine masculine. And it's the other half of it. And together they're source. They're, they're the sun. So everything, all of it comes from the sun. The sun is our, um, physical representation of source. So all all life is, and all medicines is a breakdown of that of that solar energy. And that's really what the point where I'm getting at now, where I'm teaching people. You know, because the question's starting to come. You know, like um, our church lost two kilos of ayahuasca a couple months ago. You know, and there's a lot of churches that's been that's had problems uh, getting through customs lately, especially with the borders being shut down. They opened back up. There was a bunch in backlog, and a bunch got seized. Mm-hmm. So the big question is coming up now. You know what what happens when we can't access, especially being up here in the states where we can't grow to the mass. I, I and people are going to say, well, we're growing here and there, but you're not growing to the scale that we need to supply the demand of ayahuasca mm-hmm. in the in the states. You have to you have to order it in. Um, you know, I know there's greenhouses. I know there's I know there's Hawaii and Florida. There, there, there's people um, cultivating it, but w- those mat, those old um, vines and stuff, those 30, 40 year old vines that are down in the Amazon, that are that's making ayahuasca. The older the vine, the older, the more the vibration, the more the frequency that's embedded in it, the more that gets released when the medicine gets made. It's all part of a whole process, you know. It's it's really mm-hmm. uh, that's why the medicine down there holds a different you know, different messages because it's a different vibrational force from ancestral, just the songs being there, you know, it's, it it gets broken, broken down to a very deep level. So my walk, um, was with, started with ayahuasca, but it it, it evolved to, to bring in San Pedro, uh, setting with a native American church with peyote and, and traditional, uh, peyote ceremonies, uh, native American church ceremonies. Um, it also evolved into uh, sun dancing, where that's a ceremony where I fast for four days uh, without food or water, uh, dance from sun up to sundown. There's a piercing involved. It's one of the it's one of the oldest native uh, 
indigenous ceremonies that there is. Um, no medicine involved other than the, the beat of the drum, the songs. Uh, there's no there's no medicine you're ingesting. You're not ingesting anything at all except for sun, uh, sunlight. But um, yeah, the, the piercing is a big thing. You um, like last the last year that I danced in 2019, I pierced with uh, elk bone um, elk bone pegs that were um, holes holes that were punctured into my chest the and the, the pegs put in there and then uh, ropes attached to a tree and you dance to a tree and until you pull away and you break your skin and break away from the tree signifying you're breaking holy you're break- shit that sounds intense bro <laughs> signifying that you're breaking away from the confines of the physical world so it's a uh, that's a big moment of surrender <laughs> you know you mm-hmm. have to really you have to there's a lot of prayer and there's a lot of prayers in those moments you know the pain's there but there is a moment that the pain uh, does leave you. And, you know, you don't you go into a transcendental state or whatever, you know, and I've had several vision visionary spaces in the Sundance. And um, I've had, you know, I interpret dreams. So obviously I, I, I get a lot of my messages from dreams. I, pred- I predicted a lot of things from dreams, um, both in my personal life and, you know, minor things here and there. So I help people interpret their own dreams. And one thing that I've realized from all, and this is this is if if the listeners only hear one message from this podcast, it is that the dream space, ayahuasca space, the space I was in in the Sundance, the spaces I go in that I've seen in the Uwipi ceremony. I go into the Uwipi ceremony here in a minute for people that don't know. All these spaces are all connected. There is no separation between any of them. There's there's no such thing as really hallucinations. It's it's if you're seeing something, it's going on inside you in some way, form, or fashion, you know. And it's whatever's going on inside you, it's it's going on on the outside too. There's no separation from the out from the inner to the outer, you know. The 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 great sages always said throughout the time, you know, that there's no separation anywhere, in we especially in between the inner and the outer. And that goes, that's true to an infinite amount. There's no separation anywhere in any time frame. And um, the only separation is in our, in our own mind and in, in our own perception of the moment. And that's, that's, what very... these, that's what these medicines can show you. And um, it's not just the medicines because I've experienced it in ceremonies where I haven't had any medicine within months, you know, because I've had to do certain uh, fasts for these ceremonies. So. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting thing you just said there about the the loss of boundary and the loss of uh, of kind of like your your human methods to um, navigate the world. You know, we use our relationships, our our ego, our thought about ourself, our career, our all these things that we identify ourselves with, and that helps place us in the world and in a way that we can understand the world. Um, and I experienced the total loss of all that with uh, with Bufo medicine. Um, just about uh, about four months ago, I, I had my first and only to this point experience with Bufo, and it took me to a place that was completely devoid of all barriers and human constructs. And it was like, it was not like the absence though. It was like everything had become one. Everything had united, and uh, and yeah, it showed me that you know that time and space and everything pretty much is a construct of your own mind and if you can alter the way that you perceive and and the way that you uh, if you can alter your perspective you can pretty much look at any hardship or difficulty and in, in, as as a blessing or even as a gift you know and and time usually has a way of showing that to us um but uh yeah i've had that experience where everything was melded into one or became one and um yeah, it showed me that not only are all these medicine states and the dream state one, but everything all is part of, of some great, great one. <laughs> it's just one. one. <laughs> it's just one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what my book's about, you know, and uh, I brought, so the, the name of the book, I'm Perfect and So Are You, and um, it comes from a moment where I had an experience similar to what you're talking about, very similar. Um where I went, I become one, I become source, and um, 
this was after after a San Pedro ceremony. Like, uh, it's pretty well after it. Like, uh, it really surprised me, um, um, this happening. And I realized uh, in that moment that it had nothing to do really with the ceremony. It was just it was just that moment in time that I was supposed to have this experience. So I I blinked my eyes I, I just just out of the blue and went to this space where I was staring at this ball of white light like I was totally out of body. Um, and this was just in a blink of an eye. And um, I was about to start the integration meeting after a San Pedro uh, ceremony, like with a with a group down in Florida that 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 um, I was serving. And um, I was minutes going into it and just taking a breather for a moment before I went into the air to the into the integration ceremony to the integration part of the ceremony afterwards, talking to my wife and blinked my eyes and went into the space and. I'm standing there in front of this white light and it's like, um, are you willing to give up your body? I'm like, oh yeah. And I was like, uh, do you trust me? I was like, I, I knew it. It just had this feeling. I knew what it was. You know, I knew it was like Godhead or source or whatever you want to call it. But for me, it was just a ball of huge ball of white light just in front of me hovering. I was, there was nothing around me. We were just out in space and it was just me and this ball of white light. And says, do you trust me? I said, of course I trust you. I said, do you trust yourself? I was like, oh, here's a question. I don't, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? Do you do I trust myself? And I was like, well, do you trust yourself that you're pure of intention, pure of heart? Like, are you holding anything back or anything? I was like, I don't think so. I was like, I'm a sun dancer. Like, you know, you have to be to get through the sun dance. Like, you have to go through a, a purification of you know your everything to get to get through it. And um, you know, I've done three sun dances, so I was just sitting there and I was like, "Yeah, I, I'm. I believe. I trust myself." And they're like, "Well, if you step into me and you're holding anything back, you're gonna you're gonna start a process that started a uh, twenty six uh, five hundred year process of reincarnations and restart this process that you're at the end of now." And I was like, "Oh wow!" It's like, "Okay, well, I, I'm gonna step in." You know, I stepped in. I stepped in and like there was nobody in there. It was it this vast, infinite white space that was just you know I guess it was heaven or I was inside source really. I was, but there was nothing around me, just white light and just the unbounding loving feeling was over me. And I was observing all of creation, not only on this earth but other planets, other dimensions, like everything. I was seeing everything happen, and it was all. It was all balanced, like the good and the bad all balanced out. And it just made this perfect hum that that was going on. And I was like, well, it was like I'm speaking to this energy like telepathically. I'm like, you know, this must be the reason why nobody's here. And it's like start, starts like a deep laugh like comes from this this energy or this consciousness. It's like, yeah, that's the thing that like, no one's here. You know, people come here and they think they're going to change everything. And they come here and they realize that everything's perfect and they just go and reincarnate. And I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, well, I've already gave up my body. I was like, well, what can I do now? And they're like, you, why are you asking? You're, you are acting as source at this moment. You know, you're the all. So you can do whatever you want. I was like, well, I'm going to fly as eagle. Well, you've already done that. This is why, you know, the eagle medicine come to you in this lifetime. You know, I work with the eagle medicine now and like, that's why this this medicine come to you and you know, oh, I'm gonna be this that and the other. I did like three of these things and it showed me in different dimensional spaces where I'm already doing it. I'm already living that experience, mm -hmm. and that's why that's why it's that's why it's connecting to my life now because everything I was thinking about was something that was like something on my altar or something that I connected through cer through these ceremonies. And I was like, no, this is why it's connecting to me now. And then. I was, big revelation come to me at that moment you know i was like well do i just go back as drew and they're like well you can if you want but they're like but if you take this under if you take this understanding back with you that you have right now and lots of times people get this mo this moment blocked where they can't remember this moment when they go when they go back in the body you take this memory back and walk with it and share it 
you're going to create, you're going to, you're going to be the catalyst for the evolutionary shift. I was like, well, me, huh? I was like, yeah, because this is my part of it. So just bringing that moment back. We all have a different part, a way to express his sources, love and heart. And this is my way of bringing, bringing that moment back and explaining it to people so they can, so they can understand it in a better way. So I, that's what I am now. I'm a, I'm a walking embodiment of source consciousness in human form. I'm still right on. <laughs> I like that man I like that and that, that that reminds me of something McKenna said was that you know in the psychedelic experience uh we are the ambassadors of the human race and we are entering into these other spiritual realms or other uh alternate dimensions whatever you think about it this language is irrelevant if you go if you take the sacrament you'll understand to to mm-hmm. explain it to explain it is like doesn't do it even the slightest bit of justice. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, McKenna said, you know, our 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 task is to go into these uh, altered states or into these other dimensions or these spiritual realms and to bring back what we can because we are the ambassadors of the human race. And uh, I believe what you're saying that we all have something to bring back from there. And uh, sometimes it's given very. Clearly, like I said in my last episode that I just recorded, the the idea or the the calling to start this podcast was given to me in my ayahuasca ceremony, and it was very cut and dry. It wasn't like an esoteric uh, riddle that I had to figure out. It was like, hey, you know that podcast you're doing? You should start to do it specifically about plant medicines and psychedelics. And it was like, okay, like it it was one, <laughs> one quick message, and it was like that was that was it. It was yeah. never the same since. Um, and so, yeah, I believe what you're saying about that, that, that we all uh, have uh, have these innate gifts and we all have access to, to these uh, other parts of maybe our own pers- – of our own consciousness, of our own psyche. Um, but these medicines can give us access to the collective consciousness, the collective psyche, and there's all sorts of – you know, infinite amount of information and data there for us to gather and bring back. And so when someone like yourself goes to the, to the other side and, and comes back with these jewels, you know, it's, it's great that, that uh, people, that you write books and that we make podcasts and we tell people about this, you know, I think it's very important. So, uh, yeah, I'm on board with that, man. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's an honor and it's, it's been a process going through this, you know, um, going through this whole process of, and so th- this is the other part of my, it says I'm, I'm perfect and so are you on the front and the story of one man's journey to oneness. And this is, you know, I believe the understanding of oneness and still being able to live on, still being able to be in body. That's, that's, I think that's the definition of enlightenment. You know, I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it goes past that because with with the understanding of oneness and where i'm at so i know that i'm looking at a reflection of myself right now you know it through through the through this computer i'm talking to you and i'm talking to a reflection of myself and all the listeners are a reflection of myself as well and vice versa so this is i believe one this this is a bombshell that is going to change the world and how the world operates. The understanding of oneness, if I, if I know that I'm interacting with myself at all times, it's going to change the way I interact with in my daily life with everybody. Not only dogs and uh, cats and animals and humans and plants and everything that I see, touch and feel is a part of myself because there is nothing but one so that's gonna you know this cuts out the the military industrial complex you know what what brainwashed me into from a young child everything is frequency and vibration and this is this is where i'm getting into stuff where you know the government doesn't like me talking about this stuff but this is this is frequency and vibration tesla was dead on it and this is Frequency and vibration is the basis behind everything. The Fibrachi sequence, the swirl of every of um, that we see when you use a pendulum. I don't know if you're familiar with a pendulum, but the energy that's coming off our hands that Reiki healers use. Um, all these things 
is energy and this is this is way more powerful than any pharmaceutical or western medicine that we have like the the old ones they don't they never use scalpels or anything like and what the spirits tell me it's it's we're not we're not supposed to we're not supposed to be having surgeries where we're cutting open ourselves anymore we're supposed to go we're moving into an age where we're going to be fixing ourselves without um the the western medicines we're going back to traditional ways of energetic healing healing our energetic selves which in turn heal our physical selves our inner our, our energetic merkaba bodies are what is what um dictates what our physical what goes on in our physical this is what like uh you know i'm sure you've heard people talk about like energetic traumas they lead to physical um ailments or physical illnesses and this is you know what the medicines show us um and if we do a ceremony or two we get an idea of it but if we if we live in that space um you know like i've i've dieted with uh ayahuasca like for a month on month off at a time and you know uh, taking micro doses every day and that's you know getting a con getting a steady flow of information coming in like that and really it's it's letting my this tool this physical tool that i'm in match a vibration to get that information that's simply what it is you know the, the information is not coming from the plants it's it's coming from everything it's coming from the universe around us and the help the plants are helping us reach a vibration to get to that and it's raising our vibration so that's why it's that's why it's very important like uh people that are on the spiritual path i see people on the spiritual path uh talking about you know having a beer or go, going out and having a having a drink here and there that's counteracting of what what they're trying to do if they're those are those are people that are not trying to if they understand frequency and vibration and really what they're trying to do the, the alcohol brings down your vibration there's everything has a vibrational uh, frequency on it almost all alcohol except for tequila has uh, a lower vibration than what our manifestation is vibrating at so anytime we drink it that's why that's why the depressing moods come um, when you drink alcohol and that's that's why the the feelings of infinite love comes over us when when we do ethiogenics like uh, ayahuasca and all these other uh, vibrational medicines because they I'm raise our vibration did you say that tequila is is not uh what, what's up with tequila i'm just curious it's high it's high it's a uh, higher vibrational than our manifestation so it actually it raises our vibration for uh, a brief period of time at the at the at the beginning of it and then uh, towards the end it um it starts to bring our vibration down, but almost all alcohols um, are low vibrational. And with with anything, I'm not I'm not um, saying that there's no place in the future for alcohol. But it, just like with anything, um, overuse can be um, abuse. You know, very simply. Sure. Uh, let me ask you something. I want to step back uh, slightly before we continue a little deeper into your book. But um, before you discovered ayahuasca and, and during your military and maybe your late uh your your early adulthood were you interested in these kind of uh what some people would call spiritual or esoteric paths or did it all kind of just come to you not not at all not at all you know i was i was a red white and blue you know <laughs> you know shotgun toting flag toting american you know <laughs> like i was you know, I was, all, by all intents and purposes, I, I was going to be a career soldier, you know, and um, I had back surgery, um, I think in 2008, um, when I got back, I had back surgery. Um, yeah, and just kind of, after my second deployment, it just uh, took a lot of, so much stuff happened, you know, I, I don't want to get into what happened in, sure. in, in that deployment, but so much happened, you know, I went through a divorce uh, while I was there, come home to an empty house lost lost a bunch of guys out of my unit and um some of them i know pretty personally you know and seen a bunch of stuff that i that um you know will never will never be out of my my memory which mm -hmm. um i can accept that and because getting back to what we talked about in the beginning of this podcast you know i come to a point of 
really honoring those moments because without those moments, without one of those moments in Iraq, without uh, being adopted uh, from birth, um, without any of those traumas, without one of those traumas, I may not have ever um, went to the ceremony, you know, and I not, might not have ever found my true path. And um, so it, it all it all lined up each each step, each each one of those uh, moments was a stepping stone to where I'm at right now. And I, I recognize that and I can honor that. Sure, sure. Um, so sorry to jump backwards there. Um, Go for it. No, it's all right. But Well, that's that's I was just basically interested to know if you are already kind of like looking at this path or if it all just kind of made sense to you at one time. Not at um, all. Not not right. at all. Yeah, it was uh, looking back on it now. You know, um, I've done I've done a ton of interviews, and um, people ask a lot of people ask me, you know, because um, I channel now. Um, I did. Uh, now I'm just now I'm just kind of an open voice. You know, I kind of I kind of realized the channeling was holding. If I'm a channel, then I'm only a channel at this, these moments. So I'm. I come into uh, a point where you know I just speak and um, I share from from a, a pure heart and the information I'm sharing is is from source you know because it's from the collective and it's as long as it's going in a good way and it's it's helping people then it's coming from source you know and that's that's basically what I'm doing now but this all started off I I I accidentally channeled Osiris. You know, I was in meditation and started channeling uh, Osiris, this uh, Egyptian god from that's been dead thousands of years, and he he lived for three thousand years and all this stuff. He's a he was a star being. I got to see how he was born and all kinds of stuff. And but this was just come out of the blue one day. I was in meditation, not with any medicine, not with any medicine, just with the sun. You know, I was just kind of meditating. Uh, we were driving, uh, coming from. Uh, California, uh, I think coming back from going back to Colorado, my wife was driving and the sun was in our faces in the morning, and yeah, this just started channeling out of the blue, and uh, my wife started recording it, and this is what a two and a half hour channeling, and it went through all kinds of information, and um, I went back and listened to it afterwards, the recording, and a lot of it I didn't even didn't even know or remember. I was saying, or and um, I started looking up a bunch of information. And it was verified, like this is stuff hard, very things that I that I would have to know that this was a, a verified channeling of Osiris, you know, and um, yeah, then that opened up a, a can of worms, you know. I, I started channeling people at random all the you know just out of nowhere then i then i then i re got a um downloads on how to control it and how to bring it on when i wanted to and when i didn't want want it to and then it just evolved into where i'm at now where i'm just kind of speaking as um <clears throat> yeah but i was channeling um osiris i channeled archangel michael um a Palladian collective from a from a dimension um, like a twelve Palladian collective. Um, I think that was about it. And I was in channel one day, and um, Drew was kind of to the point where he was like questioning all this stuff. You know, he was questioning what where it was coming from, and he kind of asked, you know, what Archangel Michael sounds a lot like Osiris, and is like, uh, now you got it. You know, this is. Now you're going to be channeling source. And I started channeling source, and then I haven't channeled anything else since since I made made that that shift, hmm. you know. But um, yeah, my first. So on the back of my book was my very first channeling from source, and it says, "I am the source of all creation. You are the creator through the power of manifestation. Step back into your power to facilitate the upcoming evolutionary shift." Very interesting. Um, who? Uh, I mean, let me see how, how I should ask this question. I want to ask like who should read this book. But what I mean is, is this book like a memoir of your life and your experiences, or is this book? Uh, how would you describe your book? Like who is it written for? Um, for everybody, you know, because this this book, um, you know, by all intents and purposes, what I was told from the spirits, this book was going to be the book 
of the evolutionary shift. It was kind of what this book does. It goes into a lot of because I've had visions. Um, I've had visions of Jesus Christ uh, being Jesus Christ. I've had visions of Beethoven. I've had visions of Tesla. And um, what this book is gonna is supposed to do? It's supposed to really honor all these all these ways and all these rituals and spiritual practices and religions, but it's really supposed to break it down and, and let people understand that these religions, spiritual practices, if you understand that it's more of a language that's speaking one message. And if you can, if you can look, if you can just step back for a moment and look at it from uh, outside perspective and look at Buddhism, look at Christianity, look at Native American practices, look at, look at, um, you know, the, the religion of UFOs, you know, look at the religion of Catholicism and Vedism. Uh, they, they all speak the same thing. Uh, really, if, if you, if you really listen to the vibration and don't listen to the, the particular words, or titles that uh, each thing has, it's all speaking about the same thing. It's all it's all a roadmap back to oneness. And mm-hmm. you know, this is this is where we're this is this is the moment where in in our existence we're about to we're about to go through biblical moments. You know, a lot of people read about these things and believe them that they happen. Ton, millions and trillions of you know i mean i shouldn't say trillions but billions of people around the world read all these religious texts and totally agree you know that and believe that these things happen in these times but th- you got to ask yourself what what would it look like if it happened in our time you know would it happen would it look like a pandemic would it look like would it look like uh, all these things that uh that's going on right now and this is what we're going through in this moment we're actually living through a a prophetic uh biblical times right now what you're saying is reminding me right now of uh graham hancock's book supernatural have you by chance read his book supernatural no um people um recommend books to me all the time but i'm until i get done writing the books that are coming through i'm trying not to read too much about into things because i don't want to be swayed either way like uh, I, I want i want what's coming through to be pure and not not adulterated as possible it, anytime sure. any t- any time that we put into words anything that's coming through telepathically it's gonna be washed down so so that's that's one thing i'm dealing with but i've man there's there's all kinds of things out there that talk about the same thing and that's that's only more solidifying what i'm talking about you know people say oh yeah you gotta, you gotta read the four agreements you gotta read the law of one yeah it's talking about this but this if you read my book this my book is put in the most i asked for the information to be translate to allow me to translate this information in the most basic way possible without using metaphors or any as without use with without least amount of metaphors as possible is basically what I'm trying to sure. get at. Like with the least, wanna, with the less amount of guesswork for the reader. Right. Because yeah. I don't, you know, one thing was told to me that, um, you carry this message, come back. You, you're going to carry this message in physical form, go down and do that, but do not become a deity. You know, you're, if you become a deity, you're going to circumvent everything that, that, that we're, that, is being worked on right now the the and this is the message of it is the deities inside each and every one of us and we have to find it you know Mm we we can't we can't look at ayahuasca as a deity we can we can honor ayahuasca but we ultimately have to honor ourselves as a deity itself and still be one and still be and still um allow our ego to be separate you know we have to find that balance you know the ego and the spiritual side, we have to find that balance and walk in the center of that. You know, that's why the, the red road, like uh, native American, we talk about red road. You talk, you know, on one side of the red road is black and the other side of the red road is white and you're walking down a red road in the middle. And sometimes you might veer off one way or the other, but the more you walk on that path, the more you find your balance and, and get and stay in the middle of it. Sure. 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 So, yeah. I think that's important. I think that's, 
hard to do. You know, that's hard for me to do. Uh, <laughs> and I've been think I've been thinking about that lately, man. I was like, you know, I've been in a relationship here recently, even today. That's kind of pushed. That's that's been pushing my limits as far as like, you know, the things that ayahuasca taught me, the things that my psychedelic experiences have taught me, which is to surrender to forgive to forgive yourself to let go to move on things like that and uh, this relationship is really challenging me in a lot of those ways and i was just thinking that today i was like damn dude it's about time for you to probably go back to the jungle because you can i can logically remember these lessons but it's like they're not being enacted in my life in the way that i want them anymore um, and I know that that's not the responsibility of any of any plant or substance to get me to behave properly, especially now that I'm aware, you know, uh, sure. before before ayahuasca, it was like I didn't even know, you know, I just didn't I just wasn't aware of these things that were inside me. I, I thought I understood the problem and I actually went to ayahuasca like that. Like, I, I know my problem. This is what I need help with. And so as the ceremony begins and we start to get into it, it's like, okay, this is what you brought me, but let me show you the next level down and the next level down, <laughs> yeah. the next level down. Where and so then I'm, yeah, then I'm like at the <laughs> bottom of this like cauldron and it's like, this is the bedrock. The bedrock of this is that you don't really love and accept yourself. And it's that you don't know how it's not that, you know, it's really not even your fault. You just don't, you aren't aware of how to do it. And uh, she showed me several things during that during that experience of like she let me feel like the way that basically this is the best way I can put it. She let me feel the love that like all mothers throughout all of time uh, together feel for their child, like this extreme unconditional like v massive love that all mothers have for their children. And it, she was like, I want you to feel that about yourself. Like you're the mother and the child. So yeah, love yeah, yourself yeah. in that way. And so, you know, I remember that lesson and I'm like, yeah, man, I, I feel like I've kind of gotten out of whack with those things and it's time to realign and in, in, into that way. And and I know it's a work. It's not like you, you know, like in my peyote ceremonies, the, the road man told us, look, uh, the peyote ceremony is really the practice for the prayer. The prayer is your life. Your pr the prayer is what happens when you leave the teepee in the morning. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, I've been... uh, these these ceremonies, they trick us into praying for ourselves. You know, like like if you said in an NAC meeting, like a peyote meeting, you know that there's a point where you pray to water for a long time in the morning. You know, and it's... it's it's almost to a point sometimes where you're like, oh my God, like, please stop this prayer. Like we, I just want to get out of the meeting, but you pray to the water, you pray to the water a lot, you know? And, um, I'm usually a doorman. So, um, I usually get time to pray with, pray for the water in the morning too. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I still go to these meetings even after this consciousness I'm in now, but a lot of times the, the road man doesn't want me praying because like, when I pray to the water, you know, I let, let them know, like, we're praying to ourselves. And this is really, we're practicing to pray to ourselves. If if we're constant, if we're, if we don't never, if we never move past the idea that we're praying to that water and we're just going to charge that water up and drink it, we're not moving past the reason behind that prayer. The mm -hmm. reason behind that prayer, you pray to the water, charge it up, then you drink it. But after a while, you have to understand that you're 80% water. So that water that's in there. You know, it could be part of a manifestation of your child that's in that bucket right then. By some way, form, or fashion, that water may be part of a manifestation that, or a person that you might meet in the future. Might be in that bucket right there. Might be part of the 80% of that, of that makeup of that manifestation of that body. You don't know. Or it, yeah. could, be, it could be one of your ancestors in there. But really, yeah. if, there, if there's no separation, that water is you. So these ceremonies are tricking us into praying for ourselves. What? Mm -hmm. Well, I was going through this process and going through it for a couple of years, and um, you know, serving the medicine and traveling around the country, and you know, lots of times uh, doing, you know, never turn, never, I've never turned anyone away from the ceremony for. You know, it, for money's sake, you know, if someone showed up and couldn't afford it, you know, they sat and we figured it out later or whatever. You know, it, the, I never let money get in in front of the 
the ceremony, you know. And one time I was in in meditation um, without medicine, and I was just talking to the spirits, and I was just like, you know, I've given up a lot. I've sacrificed a lot. You know, I honor the, the whole spirit world and all the creation. And, you know, what is holding me back? You know, what is holding me back from moving forward? And uh, the spirits told me I wasn't honoring all creation. I said, what do you mean? You know, I'm sun dancing. I'm, you know, I'm on this. We've been on this path full time, medicine people, for over going on three years now, I think. And we're part time before that, you know, and really jumping off the cliff into full time medicine work. We've been doing it for a couple of years. And, you know, talking to the spirits, I'm asking, what, what, what's going on? What is, what's holding me back? You're not honoring creation. It took me a while to figure out what I was missing, but I was missing a huge part of it. I was missing the vehicle, you know, I was missing the 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 face of this message and all this all this other stuff. And I had to honor myself like that. I had I had to I had to honor myself like I was honoring everything around me. And once once I did that, oh my god, like <laughs> it's yeah. a whole whole nother whole nother platform of lessons that because it never stops you know yeah. if if anybody's listening yeah. thinks that there's oh this guy sounds like he might be at the end of it no i'm just on the path somewhere you know yeah. i'm just on a different part of the path than you and it's the same it's the same level no higher or lower it's just a different yeah. part of it but trust me the path never stops it just it never stops <laughs> yeah every time you think it is it just gets weirder you know, that's one that's one thing that's been showed to me through all my psychedelic uh, experiences is that, look, man, if you and, and and sometimes it's more intensely and sometimes it's it's in different ways that I'm shown this. But it, it's almost comes up in every psychedelic experience I've ever had is that, look, man, if you can't if you're incapable of loving and honoring and forgiving yourself, how do you think you're going to be capable of doing that for other people like you know, if if we're utilizing the model that you laid out earlier, that we are all reflections of ourselves, then, you know, I'm not even the reflection. I I'm looking right at myself in the eyes. You know, and it's like, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. if you if you can't give yourself that grace, more than likely you're not going to be able to offer that to other people. And uh, you know, that's something that's been a constant struggle in my life. And yeah, I would just be willing to assume most people have have a, yeah. a problem with that. <laughs> well, that's you know that that's a big part of why, um, and really where I'm at in my in my path at this point, I'm starting. I'm more identifying with my spirit much more than Drew. So sometimes I may speak um, separate from Drew, but um, one thing I recognize about Drew's manifestation and why he's here and his whole storyline is to show people that this guy that did that went to Iraq, you know, I'd by no means like a GI Joe, you know, I didn't, I didn't earn no big medals or anything. You know, I don't, I don't claim any of that stuff, but that, that time in Iraq, if it's just show people that, um, that guy that did that can still come back and write this book and bring and bring forward this message i understand that's part of the picture of this whole message you know mm -hmm. for and it's meant not only for myself but other people you know sure. and um i survived iraq i survived suicide i survived myself you know and i found um eternal life and you know i'm I really, you know, I'm done with incarnations after this one. If I don't, if I choose so or not, you know, I've, I've earned that right uh, in this lifetime. And that's all what, what we're here to do. We're here to, we're here to find ourselves. We're here to, and there's going to be, most of us are going to find it in this lifetime that we're in right this moment, you know? Um, and some of us are not, and that's, that's okay. You know, um, cause there's not, there's really no time. So we're, we're there's no race to get anywhere. You know, yeah. a lot of a lot of us here um, doing podcasts and doing work right now, um, like heavy spiritual work. We're we've already done it. You know, we've we've done it several times in the past. And you know, I, I realized after a while, I wasn't I wasn't learning anything about plants. I was remembering stuff. Like I was remembering stuff of um, 
the very first Sundance I ever went to, I was, I was just going to go there. I got invited to one and I went there and I had a dream two months before going to this. I got invited to the Sundance, agreed to it. A couple months passed, about two months before the Sundance. I had a dream of myself dancing in the arbor. Um, in the Sundance, I spoke to one of the uh, elders there and they're like, well, it sounds like you're supposed to dance. So I danced. Never seeing a Sundance before or anything, I walked. I just walked in and, and, and danced my very first Sundance. And, um, you know, I got the message really quick that, you know, I knew about a, a lot of stuff about it and remembered a lot of stuff about it, my very first Sundance from, from past experiences. So one thing uh, I, didn't, I didn't talk about before, um, we, we skipped over. The thing about manifestation that, that a lot – that almost everybody misses about how manifestation works. Almost everybody gets down to intention. They get down how to um, channel their energy or, or, or push it somewhere towards an idea. And they, they, they have their intention and they, they, they watch this intention for, you know, days and weeks and months. And then it turns into years as they're watching this intention. Then they, then the manifestation doesn't happen. Then, then they start to give up on the idea of manifestation. So it starts to become, starts to go back to the way it was before they had any idea of it. The one thing that they're missing is the act. They're, the manifestation is a balance between the spiritual and the physical. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that happens in the physical as a result of the balance in between the physical and the spiritual. So they're missing the act. They're missing the move forward with it. Um, and, and lots of times it's just a step of moving forward with it and then everything else falls into place, mm -hmm. almost, almost like it was pre-designed. I, I went through this with this book. You know, I knew this book was here. I knew this book was ready to come through me whenever it was ready. I knew I couldn't write it because um, a lot of this book is channel text um, mm -hmm. that I sat down with um, – a retired, a retired neuropsychologist, which who who found me through a, one of these podcast interviews, she um, was listening to it, and she had a remembrance from a dream that she had, um, or a spiritual. No, she had a spiritual experience back when she was in her twenties. She's in her seventies now. She had a spiritual experience when she was in her twenties in India. Said that she was going to meet someone during her lifetime, and she was going to help write a book that was going to help humanity. She was listening to one of a podcast interview and contacted me, and we put together this book together. And she helped me put together this book. So she's wow. a reti she's a retired neuropsychologist, and um, yeah, it's a uh, moving forward with this book. It, it's you know we we sat down and uh, from start to finish, I think it was forty nine days that it took, or forty six days or something like that that it took us from the day we started on it and to the the day we published wow. and uh, so yeah I, I self publish so that's why I, I try to I try to do a lot of um, interviews to get it out there you know there's no there's no um, advertising house that's helping me out on this it's all my advertising so um, and just having faith you... faith in the book absolutely um that's pretty crazy that that <laughs> synchronicity worked out like that man that's awesome yeah um. Why don't you tell listeners where they can find the book, where they can follow you, where can they access this information? Yeah, um, so you can go to Amazon. You find the book. I'm perfect and so are you. You can Google my name, Drew Banky. Last name is spelled B-A-N-K-E-Y. Um, you can check us out. Um, our website of our church, Sacred Journeys Within, is the name of our church. Um, we're here in Southern Colorado in the San Luis Valley, close to in between Taos and, um, Pueblo, Colorado. We're in between Taos, New Mexico and Pueblo, Colorado, pretty much, uh, directly in between if you draw a straight line. Um, Sacred Journeys Within, uh, J-O-U-R-N-I-E-S, Within, Jour that's how Journeys is spelled. Are you going to, are you going to put a link? Can you put oh, a yeah. link? in for the people um yeah and um yeah i usually do a pod i usually do an interview every couple of weeks i got another interview coming up with uh dave scott from space dot radio um next month we have uh our retreat um kicking off our ceremony season uh march 6th um which is fully booked out uh, already 
um, sorry, but we will be having more um, coming up. We're we're introducing, we're starting to work with changa this year, um, a smokable form of ayahuasca. That's another medicine that's came that's came into our um, our realm. Um, we're highly trained. Um, me and my wife, we we hold the space together in loving balance. Um, we hold the altar together. Uh, my wife Ella, she's a nurse. Um, she has over 12 years of experience being an LPN nurse. So she does our medical intakes. We go through um, medical screenings, uh, small medical screenings, making sure we're trying to provide the safest, um, you know, facility available. Um, what we can provide at this time. We also do. Uh, we also have equine therapy. We have two horses, so. Um, that's in conjunction with ceremonies. So when we have uh, multiple day ceremonies and our off days, we'll, we'll do uh, interactions with the horses. And in those times you can really see and um, you can really experience the, the telepathic abilities of horses in those moments. So that's why we use, that's why we have the horses here. Um, yeah, we have five acres out here um, off grid homestead in Southern Colorado where Totally on solar. Um, we're about to have a well this year. We haul our own water in right now, but we're about to have a well. Um, we have at least one documentary that's coming up and um, two other pretty really big projects in the work, uh, film projects for our church and everything this year. Um, April 22nd to 25th, I'll be, um, I'll be one of the speakers to... Uh, the headline speakers at Zen Awakening Festival in uh, Southern Southern California. Um, and I don't have any other information than that, but it's it's Zen Zen uh, Zen West Festival. If you if you go to my if you can look us up on Facebook page, also Sacred Journeys Within, you can go look us up on Facebook. Um, I will always post links to other uh, interviews I've did or upcoming events. Uh, we don't do a whole lot of traveling right now. We were doing a lot of traveling in Florida and Ohio and and um, around all around the states doing ceremonies. Um, but now that we have the horses and everything, we're doing a lot more ceremonies here. But Zen Zen Fest, we will be there. I will have books um, on hand. I will be doing a book signing there. And uh, I'll be teaching classes on uh, manifestation, how to tap back into our t uh, telepathy and telekinesis um, at this event and speaking about my book. I'll be speaking about my second book coming out soon, which is uh, the title of that will be Son of the Sun. And that will be uh, directly um, explaining, going at more in depth into our relationship to the sun and how we can tap into that energy, both both at night, uh, both during the day and at night, because we can use the moon um, at night to tap into that that sun's energy. So, wow, dude, sounds like you're a busy man. You got a lot of play, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good, dude. That's good. Staying busy. Um, yeah. fantastic man yes i will i'll link your social media i'll link to your book on amazon i'll link all that in the show notes uh this episode won't air for a couple weeks but uh, i'll reach out to you prior so that way you can promote and do your thing with it as well cool cool real, real quick i want to break down of why um you know why we're do why we're in this moment in time okay so back um in 1800s there was a gentleman that that coined the phrase uh, 2020 vision and that that was that was to that was a medical term to describe perfect vision and that's that's when we started getting to into optics and and glasses and all that stuff so from that point forward that's that's when the collective decided that the year 2020 was going to be our year that um there was going to be a lot of truce and a lot of clarity come out so if everything is if everything is frequency and vibration then everything that and we know on a personal on a personal fact that anything that we think about matches our outer and our inner matches our outer and there's no separation. That same thing is is true on the collective scale. So if we're think if all these years, generations have passed that we decided that 2020 and the vibrational um, the vibrational 
intuition or code that goes through you when you hear 2020 is clarity. That's the first thing. Before the year 20, 2019 and 2018, if someone said 2020, the first thing you're going to think of, oh, they're talking about perfect vision. They, you know, they don't have to wear glasses. They, 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 they have perfect vision. But when the year 20, when the year 2020 came, that vibrational code has been embedded generationally in our cells. So every time that we wrote down 2020 in the year 2020, and any time that we said it, there was a vibrational code and a vibrational admittance that come off of your being, your manifestation of clarity, and that that went out into the that went out into the ether, and then the person beside you they wrote down 20 they wrote a a check or they wrote they wrote something that said 2020, and that that vibrational admittance come out. So it manifested clarity to happen in the year 2020. This is this is of, this is of design of our own manifestation. The year 2020, the year. This is why this is all happening. Yeah. So people ask me, what does the year 2021 mean? Perfect clarity, year of oneness, and welcome nice. to it. And welcome <laughs> to it. <laughs> I'm happy to be here, man. Because 2020 was a, it was a wild ride, man. But uh, I'm happy to be here, it's, dude. It's I'm all. A, it's all a matter of it's all a matter of perception. So this book, I want to end it like this. Sure. I, I'm perfect and so are you. That this is the truth of reality. Everything is in divine order. We hear that in ceremony all the time and we come out into the into the physical and we lose it five minutes after being out back into the physical body after ceremony. We forget that. We have to understand that is the truth. Our perception is the only thing that says different. This is why Buddhist monks, this is why all the sages walk around with a smile on their face, because they are looking from an, a point of observing it happen instead of being a participant that thinking that something is going wrong or right at the moment. But really, everything is we're living in heaven right now. If your perception is that if you're if you if you perceive 2020 for being a moment that was hell hellacious then that, that's your moment but for a lot of us we deep down we wanted to spend more time with our family we wanted to be we wanted not for me i wanted not travel so much deep down you know i wanted deep down i wanted to be have more roots mm -hmm. and i wanted more time to to self-reflect i needed time to write my book i wrote my book in 2020 miracle miracles can happen if if you perceive it as so so it's all our perception, and I just want to leave it at that. And, right on, and, man. And blessings to you, brother, on your work. I honor Thanks, you, man. and it's time for us to lift each other up. You know, if I lift you up, I'm lifting myself up. You know, sure. and and we have and every every one of us has to realize that we're looking at another another part of ourselves, and how sure. we're treat how we're treating those around us is how we're looking at ourselves, really. I totally agree with you, man. I think that's a great way to end it. Thanks a lot, Drew. I'm glad we finally got to get it together. I think we played tag for a little bit, but not too long, man. But it's been a pleasure talking to you. Hey, um, it's all divine order, brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> Good to meet yeah. you, dude. My honor. Blessings to you and your work. And yeah, let me know when the, this all go, is ready to uh, pop out there. And um, yeah, I am look forward to seeing you progress and seeing seeing where you're going with everything. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot. Same to you, bro. I'll see you around. I will uh, be in touch, okay? All right, brother. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.